an improvised explosive device detonates. But let's turn back the clock. To reach this point has required an entire network of financiers, bomb makers, recruiters and emplacers. If this network can be disrupted, then the threat can be reduced. One of the ways the network can be attacked is to gather evidence and intelligence at the scene of an IED. That's why a new NATO course has been set up in Hungary to train weapons intelligence teams. Well, I suppose you could break it down into two different parts. Uh, first of all, we try and think about the uh, uh, tactical side of tactically why did this happen, why were we attacked, uh, what mistakes did we make, what did the enemy do to attack us. And the second part adds on to it in being the technical part, what actual evidence we can get, what type of device it was, and maybe forensics that may help us in a court of law to try and catch the person that's done this. Once the scene has been made safe, a weapons intelligence or WIT team can start to investigate. IEDs have caused nearly 70% of the casualties to ISAF forces in Afghanistan, which is why NATO has made counter-IED work a priority. The Secretary General of NATO directed that he wanted a uh, counter-IED action plan put together, which uh, came to Allied Command Transformation to develop that plan in conjunction and coordination with all of the uh, NATO commands. Uh, we came together and produced that action plan and one of the parts of the action plan under education and training is what you're seeing here today with the weapons intelligence training course. This new course, run at Hungary's central training base near Budapest, has gathered a range of nationalities together. Hungary's own operational experience was behind the decision to host the first course. Until now, the Hungarian Defence Forces uh, lost five Hungarian soldiers. Actually, the 100% of the fallen soldiers were caused by, by IEDs, one in Iraq and four in Afghanistan. After the first uh, CID event here in Santander, we recognized and we sent our recommendations to the MOD and to the general staff, and we started to emphasize the importance of the countering improvised explosive devices. IEDs come in a variety of different forms from command wire to radio controlled and victim operated. The parts that go into the construction of the device and the way it's been assembled all can prove vital in efforts to trace the people responsible. The students on the course are run through a series of realistic scenarios which allow them to analyse a scene, drawing conclusions on the nature of the device, collecting evidence and taking photos. Whilst a civilian police team may get hours to investigate a crime scene, the dangers of operating in Afghanistan mean that time on the ground can be very restricted. Usually you don't have much time because probably you are in a troops in combat incident, so you can spend more than 30 minutes. So it's, it's better to be well trained, so when you are in, the, in a real situation, you have to, to do the same things as here, but of course quicker. Once collected, the evidence can then be passed on to laboratories for further, more complex analysis, including DNA testing and fingerprint analysis. The training culminates in several explosions on the weapons range, creating as realistic a scenario as possible. Before I came here, I, I've heard about the, the IDs itself, and I know what should we look for on, on the scenes, but now I understand how does it work uh, on ID itself, so it's a, it's a very good uh, experience for me. Half of the students on this first course will be deployed to Afghanistan, working on the ground to combat IEDs, whilst the others will pass their knowledge on to their colleagues back home, increasing the number of NATO personnel able to carry out these vital investigations. This is David Heathfield in Hungary for NATO Channel.